So uh, now what I'd like to talk about is uh, ghost loads and uh, bad habits. I want to try and make this as brief as I can. Uh, you know, besides leaving uh, lights turned on or, uh, you know, the more obvious, there's a lot of things you can do. Mechanical timers, I have them all over the house. I've got them so that I cannot forget lights on in the basement. I've got them so that I don't forget lights left on outside, in particular lights that you don't see uh, from your uh, normal living space. Um, those are the ones they can draw all night and you don't even know they're turned on. So uh, if you ever notice you're doing it, just put a mechanical timer in. It'll time itself out and uh, what have you. Uh, a lot of ways of uh, settling problems. Here I've got my uh, Yamaha uh, amplifier here for music. And i got a power bar right beside it. Well, this thing is not off until that power bar is clicked off. And if you ended up having a lot of these things, uh, TVs left plugged in or turned on, VCR, DVD player, all of these, they all add up. And uh, uh, you think, you know, uh, all you need is a few of these little adapters, and they, they'll add up to two amps on the DC end. So for fun, if I've got a 110 volt appliance like uh, a 3 8 drill, the 3 8 drill draws 3.5 amps at 120 volt. At 12 volt, just move the decimal over because 120 and 12, just got to take the zero off, you move that, turns into 35 amp draw. A 3.5 amp appliance that draws at 120 is knocking you down 35 amp at the DC end. So it doesn't take long before you've got a lot of these little things, you know, in this case it's a shaver, cell phones. Here's a battery charger for my cordless drill. Uh, you know, here's an adapter charging. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This being plugged in is going to draw power, even though you're not even using it. Here I've got one of those uh, robotic uh, vacuum cleaners down here. And, you know, you can see I've got it unplugged. I've got the battery pulled on it because this thing draws power. It's waiting for a command, this thing. It's a scheduler. But, you know, they all, all these things draw power. And you don't need very many of these to add up to a 2 amp draw at the DC end. And I'll tell you something. If you had a 12 volt Coolatron cooler, the small white ones, they draw 2 amps. Well, if you left that plugged into your cigarette lighter in your car overnight, or say 18 hours, you'll be lucky to get your car started. That's how it will knock that battery down. So, if you continue with these bad habits, and you've got several of these things plugged in, well, I just showed you how you can knock a full-size battery down almost so bad you can't even get the car started. So eventually your battery bank is going to be cycled like this. So that's why you got to get rid of this is not an option. You got to get rid of these ghost loads. And here if I can just get my cameraman to uh, follow me uh, into the bedroom here a little bit. I've got the uh, moving stuff around. I got a cat on the bed there. Uh, but anyway, she's out. Uh, so here I can turn my inverter on. Uh, on and off at night, and I do when I'm done with it, boom, and I go to bed, and then it's so close to my bed, I get up, I'm not tripping in the dark or anything, so here's my stereo, I've got another bedroom stereo, I'll get them, I'll get them to flash that in a second, my DVD, the VCR, here's my uh, TV set and uh, dish, back when I used to have a dish, here's my uh, flow jet up, so another series that I'm going to I'm going to have to put that in another YouTube, just talk about water pumping. And this is my heat tape. Well, right now it uh, runs, but this is my shop vac. I've got a shop vac down in the basement, and I use it as a central vac. You can get this hose for like 24 feet of hose for 10 bucks. This is some pump hose. But anyway, this time it's not firing my heat trace. It's fun. It's fun firing my uh, vacuum. My vacuum. And, uh, and, uh, you know, 
it's such a long hose that uh, for ten bucks I can dock you my entire hose. I can, there's nowhere I, there's nowhere I can't reach with this thing. But the important thing is, is downstairs I've got a plug-in that is controlled with a mechanical timer. And you're even better getting, some of them have, they time out, off, and then if you keep turning the other way, it's hold. Well, hold means on. If you can buy them without that feature, get it without the feature. It can never be left on. In this case, my heat trace, uh, I've got 225 watt draw. If I was to ever forget that on, it would continue to draw, draw, draw. So I made a circuit just for that. And I use it for other things. And in this case, it's my, my vacuum cleaner. Uh, but um, that's how I'm controlling the circuit using a mechanical timer. But most of my timers are for lights. And in this case, I'm doing, uh, well, whatever I plug into the, that plug-in. And down there, I've just got one of those ordinary $30 shop vacs that I use as a central vac. But anyway, uh, uh, now I'm going to have to get into campers and where a lot of people, solar they're trying to make their camper run and they're all making the same mistake and I almost you know I'm almost you know to the end of my rope uh, I explain it to them I talk to them a year later and they still got the same problem they never fixed it so they say you know solar don't work no solar works perfect you didn't fix the problem so stop bugging me about it you know like uh, I talk to you about it so uh, let's cut this for now so I set things up and I'm going to show you what they're doing so here's what they're doing wrong they're using the plug-in that runs their camper and uh, the campers that have a converter and this is a, a converter all that is is a fancy dancy battery charger it's a big battery charger because they're running 12 volt fridges they're running 12 volt uh, forced air furnaces so it's not just a battery charger but it's got to be able to not just charge the battery but also run these appliances so what they're doing is they're using the cord that comes with the camper it's going through a converter and then there's AC that comes off here onto their onto a panel their, their, their AC breaker panel so what's happening is the converter is hooked up to the battery or battery bank and here's their inverter so the solar panels are going to their battery everything's done right there car charge controller everything and here's their inverter and they're plugging the plug-in into their inverter so and it's trying to run a battery charger that's charging the same batteries so they've got this this thing going around so don't you see how they're they're running this battery charger and and by the way the lower the voltage starts to get you know nighttime and you know 11 12 at night it gets worse and worse because this converter is starting to put more and more amps out and there's efficiency I mean uh, you're losing power to charge a battery and then you're losing power to uh, when you use a battery there's inefficiencies there plus you're losing a little bit of power on your inverter there's about an amp just to do the converting and they got this round and round so now I'm just I'm going to do the test for you you don't believe me watch everything's going to work just fine but uh, here we go so here's a uh, Let's go back to the inverter. This is just a 3,000 watt uh, modified sine wave, the cheap ones. You can get them for under 200 bucks. So here, let's look at the battery charger. So here's my clip. I'm going to take the clip off. And now I'm going to put the clip back on. So all i got to do is plug it in. So here's the inverter that I'm running on. And this is, the this is all one. This is all one battery bank. They're all parallel on a 12 volt system. So there, there I plug it in. See, the battery charger's going. It's doing its thing, but it's a loop. Do you not see how I'm taking power from the same source? It's like, it's like a, a snake eating its own tail. That's what you got going on. This is a crazy ghost load. They've got this crazy ghost load going on. And you know, I'm a little fed up. I explain it all to them. 
year or two, like, this is like four or five people that I've explained this to. This is what you're doing. And it's because you have this converter in there. you got to get rid of that. you got to break the converter on both sides. And then your solar system will perform the way it's supposed to. You know, so, uh, you know, with that, I mean, if you still don't understand it, I'm, just, I'm showing to you what I'm doing. Like, it's plugged in the same... It's like a snake, snake eating its own tail. It's, you know, I can't explain it any more than that. So, I hope this short little segment of Ghost Loads, uh, you've understand. I'm going to get into it again one more time, and it has to do with leaks. You're leaking power to ground, and I had one. And uh, uh, I'll tell you how I identified it. Uh, you know when it's happening because your battery bank is dropping and you're not really using power except for the inverter being turned on. And you're going to wonder, where, where did those volts go? And um, so now I'm going to just talk about leaks and i got to do it in front of my breaker panel. So let's go down there. Go. Okay, uh, so uh, what happened here was, was I had something going to ground. I had a leak going to ground. And... Uh, in order to find the leak, I had to pull all the ground wires off, hook this up to the ground wire, and then put this to ground. Each wire, I had to do it. And that's how I was able to identify it. Now, what happened was, was uh, throughout the years, I ended up going metal. I went metal roof, metal walls, just a different color, uh, as siding, and I must have clipped a wire somehow. And um, I noticed this because I would go to bed and the voltage would be, uh, you know, 13 volts, let's say. And I would wake up and it knocked it down to like 12.8 volts. That is a lot of power when you have, you know, 20, 30 batteries. That's crazy power. Where is it going? So what I had to do was to just disconnect all of my ground wires one by one. I set it on 120 volt AC, put the red on each ground, and then put it to ground, and watch my meter. And that's how I found it. Bang! There you are. And here it is right here. It's uh, been shrunk and taped, and you put green on it because it's a ground wire, and it is now isolated. I no longer have a leak. But it could happen. Like, you know, if it can happen, it will. It's just a matter of time, and this time, somehow, I must have caught a wire with a screw or something when I did the expansion on the house so and then went metal so there we go that's how you can identify uh, leaks to ground <laughs>